The 2024 edition of the Reillusion 3D Character Contest is here, and I'd like to show you the making of my entry for this event. Participants have access to free CC3 base characters that are fully prepared and ready for animation, allowing you to focus on creating your own unique character. For ZBrush enthusiasts, the arrival of AccuRig has been a game changer as it allows you to rig a character you've created from scratch in ZBrush, literally in 10 minutes. So this is the category I was most excited to participate in. This time, I didn't even do a preliminary sketch of the character or anything. I just started with an idea in my head, a pirate hammerhead shark. Let's see how it turns out. My intention is to create a stylized character. So I started with the typical modular block out to define the character's proportions and overall look. Using very basic shapes with a low polygon count, I defined the volumes of the character. This system allows us to easily adjust the proportions without getting caught up in the details and losing focus. Over the block out, I performed a Dynamesh to merge all the meshes, start defining the anatomy a bit, and create the primary shapes. Once the main shapes were defined, I applied a Zremisher and added some subdivision levels. This system allows me to switch between lower subdivision levels, which still allow for substantial changes to the basic shape, and higher levels that allow me to add finer details. Once I have the character's shape, I subdivide once more and continue to increase the level of detail with some folds and secondary forms. Using the skin shade material, I begin manually adding color using poly paint. I don't want the separation between the white and blue parts to be just a gradient, so I blend the separation between the two colors with an alpha. Once I have the base color, I use a system very similar to how real figures are painted. I apply a simulated zenithal light, brightening the areas that would be more exposed to light if it were coming from above, and darken the areas more hidden from that light direction. To go a step further, I use ambient occlusion or cavity masks to darken or brighten certain areas. For the eyes, I used radial symmetry and an alpha, aiming for a result similar to the real eyes of a hammerhead shark. When the character has eyes, it seems to start coming to life. For the teeth, I simply sculpted a basic shape, turned it into an insert mesh piece, and applied it directly to the surface of the mouth. To see if everything works well, I'm going to do my first rigging test. Before bringing the character to CC4, I open Character Creator and export a base mesh as an OBJ to import it into ZBrush and adjust the size. This can be done using Character Creator Pose Tools, but I decided to do it this way. After unwrapping the UVs for each sub-tool, we'll bring our character into CC4 using the new GoZ Plus plugin, which will automatically generate the normal and diffuse maps, as long as we've created the UVs beforehand. With a simple click, our character is sent to CC4. We import everything as a prop, and that's it. I'm going to do a quick AccuRig to see if everything works more or less well, and we'll test, for example, with the walking animation. The tail is not attached to the body, so we're going to define it as an accessory and attach it to the hips so that it moves with them. It seems that everything works well, so let's move on to the next step. Alright, let's start with the accessories. To begin with the storytelling of our character, we're going to add a rudder that they always carry on their back. We'll basically use Z Modeler to define the basic shape and perform a Z Remisher when necessary, using polygroups to guide the program a bit in creating an appropriate topology. Once we have the basic shape, we'll unwrap the UVs to be able to subdivide and have enough resolution to apply a wood grain noise. Since the alpha I'm going to use has a horizontal direction, I'll place the UV islands in that direction so that the wood grain is well-oriented. 
Once we have everything done at the sculpture level, we move on to applying the poly paint in the same way we painted the body, using base color, highlights, and shadows, and using cavity and ambient occlusion masks. Next, we're going to start dressing the character, starting with the boots. I'm going for simple boots to maintain a simple and stylized style, so we're going to work, as always, with low polygon count. To keep it simple with the mesh structure, I'm going to define the boots in three parts. The sole, the boots themselves, and a different mesh for the part of the boot that folds over itself. For the metal part, we go back to Z Modeler and create a simple shape to make an insert mesh brush. This way, we can change the projection strength so that it fits directly to the boot shape. After duplicating the mesh corresponding to the body, we simply define the part that corresponds to the pants by making a couple of cuts with a slice curve. We smooth it out a bit, lower the polygon count, and we're done. Then, to achieve a more natural fall of the garment, we'll use physics to do some of the work automatically. I mask the edge of the waist and the area around the knees, play a bit with the settings, and then we can also play a bit with the cloth brushes to add some extra wrinkles. For the rest of the accessories, like the waist cloth or the belts that hold the anchor and the pistol that will come next, we'll use the same technique of extracting them from the original body mesh, adjusting them, and running them through Z Remisher. The hard surface parts will be worked on very simply with Z Modeler. Separating the faces by different polygroups allows us to achieve the shapes in a super quick way, combining Z Remisher and Polish by groups to maintain the volume and thus achieve smooth shapes. I wanted the accessories that accompany our character to help tell their story, so I decided to make a gun that shoots anchors, and with these anchors, drag their enemies to the depths. The design of the gun was also done on the fly, taking ideas from here and there and changing them over and over until I reached a shape I was happy with. I have to say that until now I wasn't much of a fan of the knife curve tool because it usually causes the program to crash, but I started playing with it for the metal parts that come out of the body of the weapon, and I really enjoyed the creative freedom that the knife curve tool set offers. Now it's time to do a proper rigging. When I create a character in an A pose, I tend to give it a somewhat natural pose, and I have noticed that AccuRig works much better when the arms are fully extended completely, more or less in the same plane as the back. The hands also work better when they are in a more rigid position with a flat palm and fully stretched fingers. So, I modified the character using Transpose Master to find that more rigid position that AccuRig is more comfortable with. Once I have all the accessories with the poly paint done and with the UVs extracted, we can send everything directly to CC4. The plugin takes care of extracting both the normal maps and the color information so we can see everything in high quality in CC4. If we send all the parts that will move along with the character, such as the pieces of clothing, we won't have any issues with their behavior as they will adjust to the rigging of the body itself. To do the rigging, we just need to select our character and start placing the joint points in the right spot. Thanks to the help diagrams, it's super easy, even if you've never done it before. Now we just need to send the accessories. Even if we have several subtools for each accessory, it's not necessary to merge them or anything like that since all those parts can be grouped into a single element. We adjust the position of the accessories and link them to the corresponding body part, like the spine for the helm. Since the anatomy of this character is a bit unusual, we can define variations in the base posture of our character such as the separation of the arms and legs, or whether it's more or less hunched over, to improve the behavior of the animations and the poses themselves. To add the gun, 
we follow the same process we used for the helm. Now we're getting to the most fun part of the whole process. Anyone who's posed in ZBrush knows it can be a real ordeal. It's a slow process, and you have to think very carefully before you start moving your character. What I love about this workflow is that we can do a lot of tests in minutes, taking a pose from the pose library or selecting a specific frame from a particular animation. With this, we achieve very dynamic poses quickly and in a fun way. It's not a real sacrifice like posing in ZBrush. The hand position is another gem within this workflow because in the character creator library, we'll have almost any pose we might need. Even if we take a pose from the library, we can still manually adjust it to make it unique and achieve an even better result. This applies to both hand positions and body poses. So come on, let's grab our little figure and start playing. The new feature in GoZ Plus is that we can combine it with Character Creator Pose Tools. When we bring our character back to ZBrush, we activate the Relink Mesh changes in a new layer box, and also the current pose box, and the process executes automatically. In ZBrush, we'll keep everything as we had it, subdivision levels, poly paint, etc. And we'll also have a new layer with the information of our pose. With Character Creator Pose Tools, we can store all the positions in the rack simply by pressing the Convert Layers to Pose button. With this, we'll have all the positions of our character in a single project and can access them by pressing a button. After all, each pose is just a layer, so we just need to activate the Edit Current Pose button so that the layers of all the subtools corresponding to that pose go into recording mode. With this, we can continue manually adjusting the anatomy or adding wrinkles to the clothing that would only generate in that pose and not affect the rest of the poses. If we wanted to add fabrics to our character that move independently with the character's movement, we would just need to send it to CC4 as a flat plane. They shouldn't have thickness, and once the weights are defined using a mask, then we're done. But in this case, what I did was create the fabrics as I normally would, with their thickness, folds, etc., and then added a layer naming it according to the specific pose, and adjusted it manually. On this occasion, I rendered in Marmoset Toolbag 4, and I must admit that I took my laziness to the absolute extreme. I exported the high-poly mesh of each pose directly as an FBX file, with the sub-tools organized by materials to later modify them directly in Marmoset. I created a new material for each group of materials and took advantage of the poly paint we had already done in ZBrush, selecting vertex color in the albedo map to get all the color information. Then I adjusted other parameters like roughness, metalness, SSS, etc. for each material manually or modified some of the parameters of the existing materials from the library. After setting up the lights and adjusting both the position and the settings of each one, we were ready to render.